Okay, here we're doing a in-depth video on the Coachman Freelander, the 2018 20CB. We're going to go through everything on the outside first and the inside. So starting here on the passenger side, uh, just we'll go through the compartments. This is your propane. So it's just a traditional, well it's, a, it's like a traditional propane tank. We've got a manual gauge here. Got a manual gauge here. Here's your shutoff. So opens this way. Oh, it's already open. So you just it's closed now. You just would open it up. Here's your feel, or how you'd fill it up, and just a relief valve. So this, when it's three fourths full, it reads full. So these don't get filled up all the way. They only get filled to three fourths full. So that's. And it does have an electric gauge inside, so you can see where the, the the levels are from inside. So that's your propane tank. This is the um, 10 amp solar charge. You have to get the panel separately, but if you you get the panels, you can lay them out and hook in and it'll trickle charge your house batteries. So that's what that's for right there. This is a little storage area right here. All of the outside lock, all the outside storage areas lock with one key. It's the same key for all the storage areas. This is where you can wire an outside TV. So down there, your cable hookup and then outlet. So you can put a TV here if you want outside entertainment. Most of these outside cabinets too have a just a little latch. So you just lift up the latch and it holds the door open. So that way you'd have if you are watching TV or need to hold the door up, you have that. Okay, here at the rear you do have a 110 volt outlet. I'll explain those a little more in detail when we get to the other side, but this is the main storage compartment here. As again you see a Here's your, your lock on this. It's got two latches here. And it latches up here. So you have that door standing up there. We put the, I put the strap in here. I had a little small, small barbecue that I would lay against that wall. And I'd use that strap to strap around it and clip it up to the wall so that way it would stay right there. But So that is removable if you need to. Little shelf here. That's a little wrench to take off the caps to the lug nuts. And you got your three bins. I'm going to show you the water, the water drain points on the other okay, side. Okay, here in the rear compartment, under this uh, rear flap, you have your sewer connections. These are your your water hookups. Okay, city city water connection. This is where you would hook, if you're at a campground or at home, you would run your white water hose from here to the faucet and then turn it on, and that will give you water pressure in the coach. So you're basically using the pressure from the hose to run your your sinks and shower and your toilet, not the water pump. So that's what you'd use city water for. This is the tank fill. So what you do here, you hold, it holds 38 gallons of fresh water. You hook up your water hose here, fill it up with water, and when it's full, it starts dripping underneath. I'll show you where that is here. This, this is the side. rear. This is the rear, uh, one of the rear gray tanks. I'm gonna show you up underneath where the overflow is for the tank. Okay, just behind the, this is one of the um, gray tanks. Those pipes there, one is a, those are the where the, the low point drains come out of. And then the red ones where the overflow for the water. So you know your tanks fill full when you when you hear water or see water dripping out of that. It, it just drips on the ground. That's how you know you have a full water tank. This is just the rear underneath of the uh, coach, as you can see, there's no rust or any kind of thing on the chassis. Back up here by the water connection, you have this. It's just a little cable outlet. So you hook into this, and then you have access to the cable, like like you know, for your TV. Some campgrounds have that. You just hook in a coaxial cable into your that port right there. Okay, moving down, this is the, under this latch here, this is where the 
sewer connections are. Okay, just a, some information on how the sewer connections work. See the gray handles here? There's, there's one there, there's one there, and then there's a black handle. So the black handle goes to this tank right here, and this is your black tank, your sewer, or your uh, toilet tank. This is your sinks, this is your shower. So your sinks and shower have their own tank and the toilet separately. So what you do is you, when you want to empty the tanks, you take off this cap here, hook your sewer hose up to this, it just locks in place, hook your sewer up to the sewer outlet, and then you always pull the black first. So you pull the black handle out, you pull the black handle out, that'll empty the black tank. Leave that open for a little bit, make sure you get everything out. If you don't get all of the liquids out, sometimes you, you get a fall, you'll get a false reading on the tank. So you just want to make sure that's nice and empty. And then as soon as that's done draining, then you pull the gray, you pull the gray handle, let that empty. Pull this gray handle, let that empty. So you want to do the black first always. You also want to always make sure that this is left closed. Even if you're at a campground and you're hooked up to sewer, you want to make sure this is still closed all the time. Because if you just left this open, and you had your sewer hose connected, all the liquids would flow out and all the, the solids would pile up and basically clog up the tank. So you always want to keep this closed. The only time you want to open this is when you're dumping. So let it fill up and then pull it and, and dump it. Black first and then the two grays after that. The grays are basically just soapy water from your sink and shower and that just washes out your sewer hose. So that's just a word on the sewer connections. Okay, on the same side as the sewer and the water is your power outlet. The power, it's a 30 amp coach. So right now I have this plugged in just to my household outlet. It's 15 amp, 110 volt, which this is just an adapter for the plug. So the plug that comes with the coach is just this. So this is the, ho this is the cord that comes with the coach. It's a 30 amp, but it's only 110 volts. So it's not 220, it's 110 volt. All your campgrounds are going to have plug-in for this. This is about a 25-foot cord. It just coils up inside of there. But when you're home or storing it, it's best to have it plugged in. So this is just a, an adapter I have to my extension cord. It's a 30 amp to a regular household outlet, you know, like a 15 amp or 20 amp adapter. So that way, you want to keep it plugged in whenever you have it parked as much as possible. That way, it's charging your batteries. And then anytime you use any of the the electrical components inside, you're running, you're using your house power, you're not draining your batteries. So it's always good to keep your batteries topped up by keeping it plugged in. This lower compartment is a pretty good sized compartment. It's it's locking as well, just like all the other ones. And it does have a it does have your latch right here that you will hold that open. This is where we keep our our sewer hoses. It's just just keep them in a bin here. You want to make sure you're using gloves when you're changing the uh, door dumping your tanks. So it's a it's like a, a metal powder coated bin. It's very durable. It's, and then pretty deep. Pretty deep back there. This bin fits all the way in there. Okay, this panel right up here by the driver's side is the generator. There's two latches here. It doesn't lock. This compartment doesn't lock, so you have access to it. And it's usually advised, if you're going to run the generator like all night, it's usually advisable to keep this panel up. That way you get good airflow to the generator and then it doesn't like get too hot. That it... Okay, it's the Cummins Onan RV QG 4000. So there's an access panel here. You can take this off. This is how you check like the oil, or you can start it up outside. So there's just a little, open that up. Then open this one up. Okay, this panel just hooks on from the top and just, once you, once you remove these clips or open the clips, it just comes off. You've got your oil dipstick right here. This is where how you'd, how you'd fill oil. And it also has a, Let's see here, it's got the prime and start. So if you're outside and you want to turn it on, 
you don't have to go all the way back inside to turn it on. You can turn it on from here. So the primer switch here, if if it's sat more than a couple hours, you want to prime it so it'll just so you get get that light. You know it's prime, and then you just. Then just turn it turns off with this with the stop button. So start and stop. So this panel is usually on. This panel is usually on. So usually you're doing this when you're servicing it. So you just check check the oil. The oil was just changed in April, probably 20 hours ago on it. So it's only recommended to change once a year or every hundred hours. So the oil's still new. It only has about 75 hours on the generator total. That, there's an hour gauge inside, I'll show you, but that's so you check the oil. Just takes 30 weight oil. About 1.6 quarts of 30 weight. There's a in the right below this, underneath there, there's just a little drain bolt. You can drain the oil out, change and then add back in. So changing the oil is real simple. Almost like changing a lawnmower. Okay, here on the driver's side, there is a uh, the mirrors are manually folding. But they are, uh, they are they are electric when you get in there. Okay, here on the driver door you have you do have power locks. You've got power windows. You've got a little compartment right here that's covered up by the cup holder when you close the door. Then when you open the door, so current mileage thirty seven four thirteen. Your lights are manually controlled, so you you know your parking lamps and then and then headlights. You can dim dim them here, dim your gauges here, and then here's your side view mirror controls. You have electric adjusting mirrors for the side. It does have two sets of keys, so this is the main key uh, with your you know power lock unlock panic this is the key to all of the compartments outside and then there's two locks for the door there's a uh, this is the deadbolt this is the latch key this is a duplicate this these are all duplicates here so this one's not an electric it doesn't have the power functions on it. it's just the ignition key it's kind of a backup but we'll turn it on and show you some of the functions of the So you do have your uh, your little your little uh, selector pad here is how you'd toggle through the different settings on the gauge here. You have speed, miles to empty, uh, trip, average miles per gallon. It's, you have those to toggle through. Your cruise control. You turn cruise on here. You set it, you can set on either one and then plus or minus and then you cancel or resume with this little uh, tab behind here. I usually didn't use the cruise a lot because if you have, if you're loaded down with, you know, if you have full water and gear and you start going up a hill, it'll it'll really downshift to, to maintain speed and so to maximize the fuel economy, I would just not use this the, the the cruise control that much just because it can it can it's always searching for gears if you're going up hills if you're on a flat road not a lot of wind cruise works the cruise works pretty good you do have uh, this is just your rain wipers so spray is to pull back and then you can adjust manually the speed of the wipers Wiper blades are in good shape. It does have a tow haul mode. Tow haul mode or kind of reducing it to go into the overdrive. This is just a little, maybe a little coin area, little kind of a little rubber dish. 
there and then just the, just the stereo here. Pretty basic stereo controls. So you, you do have your two 12 out, two 12 volt outlets up here, one here, one there. Auxiliary input if you want to play from a, a satellite radio or your phone, you can plug into there. Okay, now we're just headed inside. I just wanted to show you there's two locks for the door. These two keys, so the smaller one does the gun lock, that's locked. And then the bigger key does, it's kind of like a deadbolt. Lock it like that. That's unlocked. So your your deadbolt, and then it just locks that in. So you can have two locks here. It does have screen door, where you can release the screen door by just holding down this little screen door closes. It's got a full screen door there. And then to open it, you just push that down and reconnect it there. Just inside the entry door, you do have your batteries underneath here. They are only a couple months old, so you're good to go with those. This compartment does get a little dirty because it's actually just open to the, the bottom of the coach, so it's kind of a... Uh, you know, if you hit taking dirt roads or dusty roads, it, the batteries can get a little dirty there. And this just locks up underneath there. We just put these little pieces of carpet there to keep it a little more clean. Okay, just inside the door you have your control panel. You have two light switches right here. This light switch here, first one, controls the, the LED light. Of, that kind of shines into the awning, kind of an outside LED light. The one next to it here is the inside lights. So you've got kind of three main lights there on that one. This is your battery on off. So I was told to just kind of leave this on unless it's in storage long term. And especially since we have it plugged in all the time, that way the lights, everything's ready to be used. But if you're going to store it long term, you want to turn all the power off, you just would turn, switch it to off. This is the awning in and out. In, it's already in now. Go out. One thing to know, I, I recently had learned this, but you cannot, it won't go in or out. The awning will not uh, operate if the engine to the coach is on, uh, the, the chassis is on. So if you have the, the ignition on, it disables this switch. So that way you don't accidentally hit this and the awning comes out while you're driving and flies away. Okay, here's your control panel. Water pump, so you'd have this on when you're not hooked up to water pressure. You want to use the tank water. You'd, water pump would turn on. This is your gas water heater. So you flip this on. You'll hear it light up. hear it light up and then it really only takes a couple minutes for the water to heat up so if you're looking to take a shower turn the water heater on wait about three four minutes you're good to go in the shower and uh, it'll be hot it's pretty it's pretty quick here's your generator control so it does have the start and stop here's the prime so if it's been sitting more than two hours since the last time you started it it's recommended to prime it so you just hold that over blue light comes on it's primed Come on up here to start. This is the this is how you start it from inside here. Here's the hour meter, so it's 74 hours, 74.6 hours. It's almost 75 hours. You can run this while you're driving. So if, to power the outlets, any of the outlets, the air conditioner, the microwave, while you're driving, you just Turn this on. You can't even really hear it when you're driving. And then when you're done using it, you say stop. It runs off of the gas tank for the the engine. I mean, the engine and the generator share the same gas tank, so you don't have to carry separate fuel. You don't have to fill it up separately. It just 
runs off of the tank. It won't it won't run you below a fourth a tank. So sometimes if you're below a fourth a tank, it won't turn on just so you're not running out of you, the generators won't run you out of fuel. And then here you have these different uh, you have uh, basically it's a monitoring system for the different systems. So LPG means uh, your propane. So if we see if you push the propane, it shows that's two thirds full. So this is a way to check your propane while you're inside. You don't have to go look at the tank. The next one over is the batteries to shows you the voltage on the battery. So it's batteries is full, so it lights up all the way. It's full. The fresh tank. So this is the fresh water. It should it's empty, so it's going to show empty. The black's empty, so that shows empty. Mm -hmm. And then the gray. That's the sinks empty auxiliary that's the showers that's empty so you can kind of monitor your tanks by pushing each of these buttons and it shows with these LED lights empty to full where you're at there so it's always helpful to know where you're at especially you know if you're not hooked into you know if you're dry camping or boondocking that allows you to monitor how much fresh water you have how full your tanks are and so forth so this is a helpful panel to get that information okay so you walk in here you got your fire extinguisher here on the other side of your control panel this cushion comes up I'll show you here so this cushion will come up and give you storage where the seat belts connect there so it's a nice storage area this these cushions remove if you need to and then up here you do have the TV this I believe this is a 19 or 20 inch LED TV. So it'll pull out. Let's see here. Yeah, it'll pull out. You know, extend. It's on an articulating arm. And then it's hooked into. It does have a, a DVD player. It's not Blu ray, surprisingly enough. It, it is just regular DVD. But any traditional. Um, you know, if you needed to fit a bigger one, you can take this. You can unscrew this panel out and put a bigger one if you needed to. Uh, a bigger one or you replace it with a blu-ray for example but if you see here the tv and the and the blu-ray are plugged into a household outlet just like this one here any of the outlets like this in the coach all have to all run off of 110 voltage so the only time these are working is if your generator is on or if you're hooked into if you're like you're plugged in if you're plugged into the shore power or you're plugged into like a campground's power source. That's the only time those work. So essentially, the TV and DVD player won't work while you're driving unless you run the generator. Okay, there is a workaround with that. So there's this little outlet here. This is a 12 volt source. All the 12 volt sources in the coach, there, there's a couple of them. They run off the house batteries, which the house batteries get recharged as you're driving by the alternator. So the alternator is charging the starting battery and these two house batteries to keep them keep them charged up so what you can do is you can get you a little inverter you know plug your 12 volt inverter in there and if it has two a two prong you know a two outlet you can plug your tv and or dvd player into that right there into your inverter and you do have you have tv and, D and dvd while you're driving so that's a workaround to that but when you're at the campground and you're hooked into power you know, unhook from the inverter and just plug into here because you have, uh, you know, power there. Okay, up here on the top bunk, there is a, so there's a cushion that goes in here that completes the bed area. It also removes, like it is right now, it sets up top. While you're driving, it just provides easier access if you're, if you're getting up and down, you know, while driving, if the passenger's getting out. It makes it easier to get in this area so that's nice there's also this mesh netting here this netting here will seat belt up into here so there's two seat belt clips here and there and that mesh netting there goes across this whole area so that way you uh, a person and or your luggage or stuff that's up there won't fall out. okay there it is so here's the cushion in place now it has these two hooks for the ladder this is the ladder in place a tip with the ladder, leave it at home. It's it's really not helpful. We had kids sleeping up there, so I guess if you have uh, people sleeping up there, 
it might be helpful, but the kids just would climb up on the seat and get up there anyways. Ladder is just hard to store when you have a lot of stuff up there or people, you have to store it somewhere else in here and there's not a lot of other places to put it. So ladder is not that helpful. But it, it, this, net, this mesh netting is nice to keep things and people from falling down off of the bunk. Okay, just above here at the, on the top bunk, there is a window on this side that pulls up. And then there's also this. All of the vents, there's four of them in here. They all wind up. So if you want to get some good airflow, vent out hot air. It, these, are, these are nice. It's screened over too, so you can leave it open and bug and get in. But you would want to have them closed when you're driving just so it reduces the road noise. Also up here on the top bunk, there is a light switch. So there's one light up, up top. Nice for uh, anyone sleeping up there. Have a little reading light. Here next to the driver's seat, we have the DVD and TV controls Velcroed on there. So those are have their spots there. So this is the, this is the dinette when it's made out into a bed. It's got the three cushions laid out like this. Underneath each storage box there is storage, so that's nice to have a little more storage area there. You've got two lights above the, the dinette area, it's just controlled with this, this switch here, they're LED. Gas shock assisted cabinets, and these go back, back there. Those are back in there as well. Okay, this is with the cushions off. You do have storage down there. Those are the two seat belt holders are. You do have to be careful you don't crush the furnace duct. But you do have some good good area there. There's a, We added this little strap here to make it easier to pull those up. And the cushion does Velcro to the top of this. Keeps it in place better. Okay, this is with the cushion cushions off here. There's a seat belt on this side. You've got storage over in, in this area as well. Seat belt there, and you got the duct run through there. So just things that wouldn't crush the duct. So the table, when you're making it into a bed, just rests on the lower, the smaller poles, and then it just rests on the, there's just a ledge around the base of the cabinets that it rests on. So the two, you got two sets of poles here. go right there and then table just can set right on top of it there. So your tabletop. Okay, then you get your cushions laid back there. You do have underneath here we have a you do have a you have a one a 110 volt this is running off the generator or short power but you also have two 12 volts underneath the table for charging so you wanted to charge a you know phone device tablet so forth you could do that there and then this is going to run off the generator okay here in the kitchen you have your two, two burner stove these are these aren't self lighting you have to light them with a with a lighter so you turn them on one thing we put in here was a okay, under the sink there's this see this blue shut off valve that shuts off the propane to the stovetop stove so we put we put that in so that the there wouldn't be any potential leaking of propane through the burners while we have the propane on. So really, anytime we want to use the stovetop, we just go underneath, turn the valve on, use it, and then we turn it off. So that way it's not left on, there's not propane active in here. Uh, you know, these can get bumped, these can move, these... Uh, so we figured it was a little safer to make sure there's no leaking of propane in here by shutting off the propane to here. That way you don't have to go outside and turn off the propane main tank, because if you did that, it's you wouldn't you'd be able to use a gas water heater or do the fridge. Above the stove, you do have a exhaust fan and light. 
it's recommended if you're using the burner top that you at least have a window open and you're using the exhaust fan. Microwave is pretty straightforward. There's a glass turntable. We wrap it in a towel while we're traveling because it does it can rattle around. Also, these burner tops come out. These rattle around, so usually we put wrap them up in a towel and put them in the sink. Okay, over here at the fridge, refrigerator, there's the on-off switch. If you turn it on, it's advised that you keep it on. There's a switch here that says gas, and uh, so if it's out, it's going to run on gas. If it's in, it's auto. So it has automatic switch over, which means when you're hooked into shore power, it's going to use that as the source of cooling the fridge. When you disconnect from power, it's going to run off the propane. And it can run quite a, uh, it can run for a long time off of the propane tank. It could probably run three weeks or more off of the propane tank without having to refill the propane tank. So, but you will, you just turn it on and off here. So you just would turn it on and then make sure that this is depressed so that way it's on auto. You'll just see it's on auto. And then that means it's running on propane if it's unhooked, but if it is connected to power, it runs on the the power. So freezer has door shelf, a door tray here, and then just a, a shelf. Fridge, you got a, you got three trays, crisper baskets, shelf, one shelf there, a small shelf there, and then one a smaller shelf up here. You have a little light here. Next to the fridge, this is your power converter. So it's also at your, your breaker box and fuses. So on this side, you have your 12 volt fuses. So there's several things that run on 12 volt. For example, like your water pump, entry door, bed, bath, light, uh, the TV jack, bunk light, CO2 detector, awning, and the USB by the bed. Those all run on 12 volt. And there's a red, there's be, there'd be a red light out if any of these fuses go out. So you can just switch those. All your other stuff, the, the higher power stuff is running like your, this is your converter, your, your GFI outlets, the AC, um, your microwave. They're running on a traditional breaker and this is where the breakers would be. Above the converter, you have two drawers, you know, kind of closet drawers that pull out. One above it here, and this is just the closet. Hangers, it has this kind of plastic grip thing, so hangers are not sliding around, they kind of just grip onto that. Okay, here in the bed area, you do have light switch here. This controls the lights kind of above the sink and by the bed. There's another light above the bed. This is kind of more of a reading light. It is swivel, CO2 detector. Here's your, here's your hand crank uh, vent above the bed. Storage, your storage cabinets here. There is a, behind the curtain here, there is a, there's an, Outlet and TV jack. So you've I've, I've seen where you can mount a TV right there at the foot of the bed and have access to entertainment. Because really, when you're laying down, you really don't have access to the TV, which is up there. All right, the AC unit. So here's your temperature setting. So it's on all the it's on cool all the way over to cool here. This knob here adjusts the fan. You can blow straight down. So if you're standing by the fridge, the sink, you can adjust the vent right there. It's adjustable on all four sides. So, so you can blow that, blow out the front, blow out the side, blows out that side. Or if you're laying in the bed, you can close them all and you get full flow to the bed area through this one in the back here. So you just turn these on. Now, this rooftop AC is only going to work if you're plugged into shore power 
or you have the generator on. So if you're driving through a really hot area and you have people sitting back here, you know, it's, and it's 110 degrees outside, you might need to run the generator and have this on. So you just, there's three settings. There's low, medium, and high. Now it turns on, I'm, I'm only hooked into a 15 amp household outlet. If I had the, the microwave on or the fridge on, and I tried to turn that on while I'm only plugged into a 15 amp outlet, it would blow the circuit or trip the circuit and it just it wouldn't work. It just would all turn off. So the only way uh, you can turn this on when you're plugged into just a regular household outlet is if no other, no other things are on. So no fridge, no microwave, no appliances on, nothing else plugged in the outlets. The lights can be on because they're, they're all LED. They're really low draw devices but you want to just make sure that you don't you're not tripping the breakers by running the AC but if you had a 30 amp out 30 amp service at your house or your campsite you can definitely run the AC the fridge the microwave and any appliances that you have plugged in that's that's also doable okay at the foot of the bed there's the furnace controls this is a, a hard switch. You really got to give this some force to turn it on. So it's it, that's on, that's off. Your temperature settings just right, right down here. So low to high. This does use up the propane. This is the biggest draw on the propane. Would be the furnace if you're running that. You know, it's really cold. And you're running that all night that would draw the propane down. I, I haven't had to really use it that much so not sure on the consumption but I have heard that it uses it quite a quite a bit if you have to run it run the furnace a lot. Okay here in the bathroom just the regular Dometic it's a foot flush so there's a pedal that you push down you push down and there's a little water in the system you push down and then you push down a little further to open it dumps it down into the tank. There is a furnace vent here for the bathroom. You do have a 110 out, outlet here. As far as chemicals for the toilet, we just have been using these. It's um, just a little drop-in tablet. So when you, when you drop out, drain and flush the tank, you just would Add in one of these with about, you know, a gallon of water. So you just would hold down the, hold down the pedal, fill the bowl with water, drop in one of these tablets, and let it let it go down. So these, that's all we're using for the chemicals. We also regularly use this gray water odor control. So just just a little bit down the bathroom sink shower and then also the kitchen sink just keeps the gray odor and obviously yeah. you want to make sure you use uh, a marine or RV grade toilet paper we also found too that if you use flushing the toilet paper down the toilet can cause the toilet paper to get stuck to some of the sensors on the black tank and sometimes you get false readings so we've we've kind of resorted to not flushing toilet paper just throwing it away and disposing of it daily so that's a way to avoid getting false readings on the tank, on the, on the black tank. But the shower here has hot and cold. And then it has a shutoff here. So if you're trying to conserve water, you can turn the water off with this switch here. That way it maintains your setting, your hot, cold setting. And then, you know, you can soap up, turn it back on, rinse off shut it off that way it's easier to easier to conserve water the little LED light above the shower the bathroom it does have the powered the powered fan so if you open up the hand crank vent hit the switch here it runs off 12 volts get the exhaust out it's pretty powerful it'll suck out hot air moisture Okay, here in the rear, 
you have the rear low point drain. I shine a light in there so you can see it better. So in there you can see there's there's three little black handles. Each one of those, you pull up on each one of those to drain out the the water out of the system. So when you're so when you're you know you're done using it for a couple weeks or so, you just pull those. You just reach just reach in there and you pull those. They just pull up and then let all the water drain, and they'll drain out of the uh, drain valves underneath the RV. Just gets all the water out, that way you're not leaving stagnant water in your tanks, in your lines. That's how you'd also uh, winterize it as well, or you know, drain all the water out. All right, I'm gonna go through the city water and the tank fill. So to fill, when you're hooking up to the city water, this is where you would hook up if you're if you want to use the hose pressure to for your shower and sink so what you do is you get your your white drinking water hose and you'd screw it into the connection here so once you get that tightened down now we would use a we would use a, a water filter so you just put it between the two hoses if you need to use two hose lengths you just put it between there and then just run it up here. So if I turn this on, I'll go inside and show you, but you turn this on, it'll give basically water to all of the water faucets, toilet, etc. Okay, before you get the, the turn the hose on, sometimes you want to consider putting on a pressure regulator. Because sometimes you don't know what the pressure is from the hose coming in or the water pressure from the hose coming in. So you want to keep it at under 50 psi. So this this is just a you can put this on the end of the faucet. It on, into the hose bib to limit the pressure so that way you don't you're not running high pressure through your lines inside the RV okay so since we're hooked up to the city water connection the hose is on the water's on which means when we turn on any of the faucets you've got free flow of water you don't hear the pump you don't hear the water pump because you're using the pressure from the hose same thing in the bathroom here. If I hold down the toilet pedal, you hold it down just a little bit, and it fills up, it fills up the bowl of water. You push down the pedal further, it it uh, clears the bowl. Like that. Same thing with the sink here. So you you have a flow of water. So where, where at all possible, you want to hook up to the city water, so that way you're not running your water pump to give you the water pressure you need. And then same thing with your shower here. Okay, so now we're going to do the tank fill. So if we hook up the hose to this side, this is where you would how you'd fill up your water tank. Your water tanks under the bed. It's approximately 38 gallons. Okay, we got the water connected here. We've got the hose hooked to the filter and then the other end of the hose into the faucet here at the house. Here in the rear, so you can see part of the tank. This is the fresh water tank. It sits underneath the bed in this compartment. And those little black valves are the ones that are going to, that you'll, you'll empty, you'll use to drain the fresh water tank and all the lines inside the house, the coach. Okay, I got the hose on. We've got water flowing in. We're filling up the tank. And I'll show you how the water pump works when we're, when we're using the tank water. Okay, back here at the control panel, since we're filling the fresh water, if I hit fresh, it's showing it's a third full. So you can kind of periodically check this to see how full you're getting, or if you want to make sure it's completely full, you simply just keep filling until it's, the water starts overflowing out of those tubes underneath the, or starts dripping out of those tubes. So we can kind of we'll monitor this, but that's enough to really start using the tank.
water. Okay, now that we have some water in the in the fresh tank, it's a third full. If we hit the water pump, you can hear it turn on and it'll pressurize the the lines. So the pump's on. Usually when you're traveling, you want to leave the pump on anyway, so that way if you get up and use the toilet or sinks, you you have you have water available. Okay, we have our water pump on. Now, if we go to the sink here, you'll hear the you'll hear the the pump turn over or start running. Just for reference, the pump is right behind this panel right here, so you can actually you can access it underneath the mattress if you unscrew the boards. You can get to it there. We actually unscrewed the pump and screwed a piece of carpet behind it, so that way it doesn't vibrate this this board as much. So it made it a little quieter. But um, so if I turn the sink on now. You hear the water pump running. So when the water runs, the pump runs. Okay, I left the water on and it see how it's dripping out from underneath? That means the tank, the fresh water tank is full. So you can turn the water off at that point. And then back here on the control panel. If we hit the fresh water, it also indicates that it's full. So we know it's full here and because it's dripping out of the overflow tube from the tank. So back here in the bathroom, so if we try flushing the toilet, we'll hear the pump turn on because it's running the water. That fills up the bowl and then we can push all the way down to clear the bowl. So the pump is definitely noticeable not super loud. You can really only hear it from inside. You don't. You can't really hear it from outside. Same thing with the faucet here. If we hear the pump running behind. Now that we've put some water down into the black tank, it'll show. us see it's a third full, showing that the water really hasn't registered in the gray tanks or the shower tank yet. But this is a handy. Uh, gauge to basically see where your levels are at. Okay, back here on the tank fill, I wanted to point out part here that says that you want to sanitize and flush the water tank. So periodically, depending on how much you're using and how much the water's sitting, you want to sanitize the tank. And that's done by putting water and bleach into the the tank and the line. So I've used this little pump here. Get you one of these. It's, a, it's like an RV. It's like for like winterization, how you'd get uh, antifreeze into the into the lines. But what you do is you would you hook this into your tank fill, and then you get a mixture of bleach and water. I don't know the ratio offhand, but it's like half a cup for every you know 40 gallons. So you mix in some water and some bleach, and then you basically pump that water into the tank fill. And then you'd fill up, and then you'd fill up the entire tank, and then turn on all your faucets, all, run water through the through the lines, that bleach water mixture through the lines, through the sinks, and then you drain the tank. You do that a couple times with fresh water, clean it out, and that's kind of kind of how you sanitize the tank. So that that was just recently done, but that's something to you want to consider in the future. You want to make sure that you're doing. So the water's you know clean and pure. Okay, the front windows have this come with this cover, covers the sides, windshield, side windows that velcros around the side view mirrors. I found it's helpful to fold over this top part of the, the magnet here. It's kind of magnetic, but it's not super strong. So if you just fold over this part and fold it up into the door. That'll keep it from blowing away, so that way you won't lose it. So when we're in a campground or something, we'll just throw this up for privacy. So both sides. So this one here is just, it's just tucked into the door and then closed on it. So that way it'll stay on there. You don't have to worry about blowing away, but it is. There are, there are these flat magnets on there to help it stay against the, help it stay against the body. It also keeps the sun out when you're storing it. 
keeps the sun out of it. Keeps some of the heat out of it as well. 